So good morning everybody and welcome to the Essential Hypnosis and NLP training. Hi Nikki, hi John, Ian and Valerie, how are you guys going? So today's session is all about the structure of reality. This is a very, very fascinating thing to learn and once you learn it, you can actually start to sort of decipher the matrix of why people do the things that they do and why it is that their structure of reality is completely different to yours even though you may or may not have all of the evidence available. So let's get started. So the structure of reality actually has three major phases in it. So the very first phase is known as reception. So through our five senses, we receive information. So through our five senses, first we have visual, which is our eyes. Then we have audio, which is where we hear. Kinesthetic is where we feel things, whether it's a gut sensation or with our skin. Then we have olfactory, which is our smell, and gustatory with our taste. So the first phase of the structure of reality is that one of the five senses, or sometimes more, actually all kick in for us to receive information. Once that information is received, it then goes on to section number two, which is perception. And this, inf one of th this information is actually perceived, and then it does one of three things. First, it'll delete any information that is relevant, that is, that is required to be kept. So the first thing that'll happen, it'll take in the five senses, and then it'll start to delete the information as to what's relevant and what's not. Then it will start to distort the information. It'll mold it into your own reality based on the information that you already have. Then it will generalize all of that information based on all of the knowledge that you interpret to be true. There are many situations in life where something has happened and you, you just generalized it and went, and went, no, 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 such and such wasn't there. But then when you actually went back into the memory and you thought about it, you're like, oh, they were there. And that's because you deleted the information, you distorted it, then you generalized it based on what you already know. And this happens so quickly that we're not even aware of what is happening sometimes, which moves us on to section number three. After these two things have occurred, it goes into section number three, where your comprehension kicks in of all of this information. So your comprehension is your internal representation, your structure of reality. So all of a sudden, you've filtered five bits of information down to three bits of information, down to heaps of different bits of information based on your morals, your code, how you see yourself and how you interpret the world. And this comes down to this time, the space and the energy that you have. It comes down to the language that you speak and the way that you learn. It comes down to your values and your beliefs. It also, dis it also can trigger memories as well because your memories are there to protect you. And when you've taken on memories and made these decisions about these memories, you will then create an action. It also can take on your attitudes towards a situation. So if you don't have very good rapport or prestige in that situation, once you distort, generalize and delete certain information from these five senses, you'll actually have an attitude towards that situation, which may be good, may be bad, and then that will create a behavior. So once all three of these phases are actually done, it then creates a physiology, a mood, and it then leads to a behavior. So allow me now to tell you that the structure of reality is known as the model of the world. So this is your version of the world and everybody's model of the world is unique to them. They believe what works for them and then they become the behavior that is working for them so that they can get the relevant outcome. So allow me to draw it out for you. Please use your imagination when it comes to my drawing skills. So I'm going to do the best possible that I can actually do. John. In other words, the reality occurs within us, not externally. Exactly, it's triggered by an external. Um, it, it, it's triggered by an external event, but we then create that reality from the internal event. So yes, exactly, John. So let me share my screen with you now. Okay, so please use your imagination when it comes to my drawing. I do try my best. So this is a human head, just in case you can't interpret that. Okay, so you have your five senses that come in. I'll make sure I've got the right colors here. So you have your five senses. So you have your visual, so you have your eyes, what you're seeing, what's going on around you. Then you have your audio. That's anything that you hear. 
any information that comes in from your ears. Then you have your kinesthetic, which is everything that's from your gut sensation, from your feeling of your skin. So kinesthetic is like the wind blowing on your skin or something like that. Then you have your olfactory, which is your smell. So you could have been walking down the street and all of a sudden you smell something and you're like, oh, what's that? And you'll keep smelling. And what you're doing is you're actually generalizing that information in your mind so that then you can work out what it is that you're smelling. And then you have your gustatory. And that's everything that you're tasting. So you can taste something you're like, hmm, what is that flavor? What is that flavor? And that what you're doing now is you're deleting, you're distorting, and you're generalizing that information to try and decipher what it is for your internal representation. So you have your five senses, okay? And your five senses get absorbed into your mind. Once these five senses are absorbed into your mind, you will then do three things. So you will delete any information. So you'll delete any information that comes into the mind. So for example, you may be at a situation and something's occurred and then all of a sudden you've just completely deleted that anybody was even there. Or maybe you deleted a sound that was there or a situation. You'll just delete what's not required because the brain can only take in 126 bits of information at any one time. And when one bit comes in, another bit's got to go out. So that's why the delete is there. Then you will distort the information because what you're doing now is that you're trying to decipher it. So you're, you, if you do seek and you shall find, so if you're looking around the room for anything that's blue, anything that's blue, anything that's blue, anything that's blue, you'll then start to take on little things that are kind of blue, but not really, but you want to add them to your bank. So you start to distort the information that is available from those five senses. And then you will generalize. And the reason why we generalize the information is because we're trying to just make sense of it. Like based on what we know inside, we want to generalize anything that's going on. So after we've done that, we generalize it. And the reason why we generalize it is because we can work it out. We can understand it. That's what we want to do. We want to work out what's going on so that we can then create a relevant behavior. This behavior leads us to go to a safe place. Some of us just make sheer dumb decisions. I mean, hello, been there, done that. But we take all of those five senses and we, just, and we put them down into three little funnels so that we can start to decipher the information. Once we've done all of that, this is when we go into our tendencies. So this is where we go into all of those things that we decide are correct for us. These are our beliefs and things like that that we've taken on board because these work for us. So it can work out to it can work out to a lot of different things like I, I said before. Oop, hang on, I've got to get my pencil going. There we go. So it can work out to a lot of things. So it can work out to your values. So after you've taken all of that information on board, do you value that information? Because if you value it, then you'll probably do something good about it. It'll create a good behavior. If you don't value it, you'll, you'll create that attitude where you're like, nah, I don't really care enough to, to bother about this. Oh, I've spelled that wrong. doesn't matter. And then you'll also take on certain beliefs as well. So when this information is coming in and you're deleting, you're distorting, you're generalizing, you're actually upgrading your beliefs. So I'll do one with you now that I do quite regularly. So when I'm distorting your beliefs, so I get you now to think of a toothbrush. So what I'm doing is I'm getting you to think of that toothbrush. So you're starting to think about that toothbrush now. And when you think of a toothbrush, it really shouldn't be called a toothbrush because you don't just clean one tooth with it. You clean all of your teeth with it. So therefore, it should be called a teeth brush. And when you hear that, when you hear that right now, I've just done an auditory with you. You've distorted, generalized the information going, yeah, I know what a toothbrush is. Yep, yep. What is she on about? You're becoming curious now. And then when I say it should be a teeth brush because you clean your teeth with it, you don't clean one tooth. I've then impeded on your beliefs in your structure of reality. And you've gone, ah, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Now, whether you choose to take on that belief and start to put it into an action, where a behavior where you start calling it a teeth brush is purely up to your internal representation, which is this little, little blue, blue, blue cloud here.
So it's purely up to your internal representation of whether you can be bothered with your energy from your tendencies to start taking that belief on. Because can, honestly, can you bother re-advertising to the world that it needs to be called a teeth brush and not a toothbrush? Probably not. So all of these things happen in here. It all happens with your morals, your beliefs, your values, your time, your space, your energy, your attitude, your rapport, your prestige. All these filters then go into what's known as your internal representation. Your internal representation creates a state. So you become nervous, you become energized, you become uh, excited, happy. So that's the state that it's creating. And then that then creates what's known as your physiology. So that'll create your physiology. And then after you've created all of that internally, that will then create what's known as your behavior. And that's what creates your behavior. And this happens in a millisecond. It happens so fast that it comes in and out of the brain and just creates a behavior. And sometimes it happens so fast that after we've done that behavior, we sort of sit there and go, why did I do that? How, why did I act so stupid? Why didn't I react in a better way? Why wasn't I more compassionate? Or why wasn't I happy with that situation when I felt sad instead? And that's because all of the information has come in so fast that your internal representation has created a behavior of safety, of protection and of security based on your tendencies. So that is how the structure of reality works. And that's why it doesn't matter what you do. You can argue with someone till you're blue in the face that something is not the way they see it and they will still go, no, nope, it's exactly this and it's nothing else. So that's what's going on there. So if you're getting somebody who's not going to shift on their values and beliefs and things like that, that's because all of the, the, the sensor has come in. They've deleted, distort and generalized based on their tendencies, which has then worked out their internal representation, their identity, created a state and a physiology and their behavior. And they'll fight with you until the cows come home that you're wrong and they're right. So when it comes to the structure of reality as well, everybody's structure of reality is correct for them. So the only way to change that structure of reality is with hypnosis or NLP language. So that way you can upgrade people on their thinking so that internal representation will actually change and then create a better behavior. So that is how structure of reality works. And guess what? Like I said before, everybody's structure of reality is completely right for them. They have developed it completely on their own accord based on their lessons that they've learnt during their whole life and that's what they've taken on board. And sometimes people get stuck in that behaviour. They get to a stage where they're like, oh, I just can't do this because they have this kind of thinking. And that's where the, the, the whole process comes down to you are what you believe because that's what's happening. It's happening so fast in and out of your brain to create a behavior that all of a sudden you actually have to stop and then go, radio, how do I actively change this behavior and change the process that's going on in my thinking? Because you are exactly what you think and you are exactly what you believe. So that is the structure of reality. So if you would like to join me next week in my next video, it's all about prestige and rapport, please pop on in because I'd love to teach you more. And if you would like to become certified as a hypnotherapist, please tap the link below and jump onto the course. Otherwise from that, you can learn more about this video on my YouTube channel, which is known as Pellin and Palmer, or you can um, watch it here on Facebook. Otherwise from that, have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.